a client met his banker to discuss opening a restaurant in a busy airport. In us, he found a partner that understood the importance of reaching for the sky. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Mac. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks Podcast Collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. Yes, tis I! It is. It is hot here, Spider Man Jeremy. And of course, with me as usual is the Lost Boy Phil. Whoa, Whoa. Hey. And I only got one thing to say, and I'm not pointing fingers, but those who have ears to hear, let him hear. Isaiah 316, starting with 316. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with heads held high and seductive eyes and go along with mincing steps and jingle their anklets on their feet, the Lord will afflict the scalp of the daughters of Zion with scabs and the Lord will make their foreheads bare. And in fact, I'm going to jump down Isaiah 3, 24. Now it will come that instead of balsam oil, there will be a stench. And there will be stench. Uh, he's got to <laughs> sing it again. And, you know, sometimes stench is because you smell it. Sometimes it's just the whole thing's rotten. That's it. The whole thing's rotten in Denmark. And uh, that's all i got to say about that. We got a lot of fun stuff today. My gosh. I, I know we're like a week behind on what I'm supposed to be doing. So, I mean, we've got so many things that's happened like Halo and Moon Knight. And we're going to talk about what we've been watching. Uh, I got to play a game. I got some stuff on a game. Got to connect some things. There's been uh, like new trailers, new announcements from Star Wars, and and a bunch of stuff from Disney that I ain't even going to talk about. I'm just going to leave Disney alone because we. It's not so much that I've left Disney; it's that Disney left me, and I think they've proven it even Aww, further this week. Poor guy. But I'm still. I still love vintage Disney. I'm. I'm. I love Walt's Disney, mm-hmm. and I still love the '90s era. You know, the Renaissance stuff. I mean, and there's still a lot of Disney stuff I like, but. Uh, here over the last maybe 10 years or so, I guess Disney has left me, which is sad. I mean, because it was after I got so enthused and so excited after going to the parks, but they've they've kind of left me, uh, I must say. So, not that I would probably, you know, not go to a park if I had the opportunity, I'd probably still go. Well, from what I understand, I the park, going to, I, I've known someone, and just recently I was talking to someone, who went to the park and they said it was not near what it once was. Yeah, it's it's been kind of messy since COVID and everything, so, yeah. But there's some stuff I'd still like to do. I mean, I, I haven't gotten to go to Galaxy's Edge. I'm st- it's Star Wars. I kind of still would I like to go. I was talking to someone just a couple of days ago who uh, went during the COVID situation. I, I like to call it the COVID situation. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds yeah. like a movie. COVID situation. COVID situation. But they went movie during of the, the week, brother. Yeah, <laughs> they went to the COVID situation, and uh, when they went, they said that uh, the workers that were, used to be there during the COVID, a lot of them weren't able to be there, and so they had people who weren't usually Disney mm. workers. All the good Disney workers, you know how they are with yeah. their great spirits. So these people that were working, at least then, I don't know how they are now, but they d- didn't have that Disney attitude. They were rude. A lot of them, no. and, and they were. And I was like, wow. Because part of the what makes it magical is that Disney magic of yeah. the attitudes and all. 
Yeah, it's that there was magic that Walt put in there. Oh, and, yeah. And then Roy brought it to the oh, to Florida. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, it's, it's, they, they got to keep it going. Absolutely. Well, some of the magic is gone because uh, Maynard mm. has retired. You know, I'm sure you've heard of Maynard oh, over yeah. at Disneyland. He's legendary. I never got to go to Disneyland to meet or experience him working a, an attraction, but I've heard audio of him in attractions, and he was just he, he he brought magic. He was a riot. He's hilarious. Uh, and I've heard him on the Haunted Mansion when, when he gives spiels. I've heard him uh, at the Tiki Room giving his thing. Uh, you eaty, eaty. You drinky, drinky. After end, you throw it, throw it, and bin. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. It's just so funny. You know, he would he would just keep characters. And there's even a Facebook fan group for Maynard where people would find him and take photos with him. And he was happy to do it. I mean, he really brought the magic. But, you know, he's been at it a long time. And so he's he's retiring, which is actually something I have probably, you know, the article will pop up in the news thing. But I guess I've mentioned it so I don't really have to. And that's about as Disney as we're going to get today. <laughs> I've even taken the, the Disney section out of my show notes. Yeah. Because I'm not really covering the parks. But there's... There's so much stuff to be excited about outside of the world of Disney, uh, even though Disney still owns some stuff like some Marvel, you know. So they still, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm still sitting on the fringes. Marvel so, and Star Wars and yeah, stuff they still like they that. still own yeah. a lot of stuff I love, so I still get excited about a lot of their stuff. Well, we still love a lot of Disney, and, jazz, and, but... and I still do. And I'm probably every time they put an animated movie, I'm probably going to see it anyway. But you know, in my opinion, this is this is as far as I'm going to go with it. But I would say, it'd wake up and unwoke. <laughs> yeah. Well, they got some employees that rose up and are kind of getting tired of this, and a lot of even uh, celebrities are starting to say, you know, this woke thing is kind of bad. Heck, even Bill Maher suddenly, you know, uh, it know. starts to have some agreements with with. Uh, a conservative thought, then you know something's up. Yeah, he's and he's not conservative. And even even but, Russell Brand, of course, I think they're more libertarian. I yeah, guess in their yeah, yeah, libertarians yeah. and conservatives are starting to get along now. Yeah, which in all reality is the way it should have always been anyway. Yeah. That you can have disagreement and yet be in uh, agreement with kindness. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. be able to, to talk yeah, about yeah, things. shake hands and and be pals without yeah. agreeing with. I have a lot of friends who. Isn't that what Padme said that the the government and everybody we're supposed to do is get together and try to figure out what's best for the people yeah. together yeah. and have different opinions and. So my, so my dearest friends, but yeah, we're, we're, I don't want to uh, sit on this too long. No, but some of my dearest friends, we don't agree on every little thing, but we're still good right. friends, right. very good friends, right. Yeah. And some people just decide, of, oh, if you're on this opposite end, you are, well, I don't want to go in, you know, because YouTube well, will take us, but you're horrible things. But I, well, well, this to, is not to, where to the show it, needs to, to sit. Make it, to make it very similar, uh, Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny can still shake hands. Right. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and one person did point out, hey, you know, Walt actually had his opinions and stuff, but he never put it into That's his work. That's exactly right. No, you know, the, we, we can see now how he voted and he tended to veer certain directions, but he didn't put it into the company. That's right. And uh, he was interested in telling stories and making magic. And Dagum at Disney, remember to tell stories and make magic. Anyways, so uh, we're going to put some television review stuff in here. I, you know, I used to have a sounder for television reviews. I'm, I'm going to go silent for just a second because I'll probably be able to edit one in. There we go. Because what have you been watching this week? Well, I, I got a couple things. First one, I have to talk about it because, holy cow, Moon Knight premiered this week, first episode. I haven't gotten to watch that yet. You haven't? No. No, I'm not I will try it. not to spoil I've watched that episode twice because after Heather came home uh, and I was like, Heather, you got to watch this. I've been hearing about it. I've been wanting to watch it. It was, I mean, uh, what, what I because Heather is a fan of the Brandon Fraser Mummy films. Yes. I said, you know, if you're a fan of those films, you'll like Moon Knight because they're, they remind me of that without some of the cheese, but there's just the right amount of level of humor. Sure. But and and scary like the first one movie with Brandon Fraser had some scary moments yeah and this one has some scary moments and what's what's been great what about this first episode was uh, all right so now I, however many maybe a month ago when the when the first teasers and trailers of this Moon Knight came out we did an episode I don't remember what what number it was but it was called Marvel's Answer to Batman and we covered everything we could about Moon Knight back there so. Uh, the the main things. Uh, hopefully you've been with us that long. Otherwise, go back and listen to that one. It's a good episode, I think. Uh, but you've got a guy who's got multiple personalities, and some of his multiple personalities came because he had to hide as some of these personalities. If I'm remembering correctly, if I'm reading up on that, because uh, I think that might be what has happened here. But what's cool about Moon Knight is instead of hanging around with Mark Spector, who is the the original personality of the guy, we're getting the story told from Stephen Grant. One of his other personalities who has no idea what's going on. And we get that every man. And it's, it's really kind of fun because we get to love, you know, Stephen Grant, this this poor schmo. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, hats off to, uh, oh, 
I keep wanting to call him Poe Dameron because I always forget the guy actor's name. Yeah, he's a good actor. He's oh, he's doing so great at this at being like completely two different people because you know he's even to a British accent and he's a completely different person. And there's only a little bit of time we see him as Mark Spector, uh, but we get to go and follow this guy around who seems everything seems normal, but he seems like what I don't remember doing that. But then we have moments where he blacks out or shooting the screen's kind of flash, 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 and something has happened. And something has changed, and we see it's changed, and he has no idea how it changed. But every, every time, at one point, it's, it's so funny. There's like a scene where every time he pops up, you hear this deep, booming voice like, oh, no, the idiot's back. Mm. Give him back the body. Give Mark back the body. And he's like, who's Mark? What? What are you talking about? It's, so it's this, you feel bad for the guy. I mean, because scary situations are happening to this guy. But it, it's just funny that the, the, where all this stuff keeps happening to him and the, and the reactions he's having. It's, it's quite comic and yet quite uh, funny at times. And, oh, my goodness, Ethan Hawke. Can we talk about Ethan Hawke being just a great actor anyway? Oh, he's a tremendous actor. He is so calmly scary in this. So calmly scary. I I thought you maybe had gotten to see it because the opening opening scene, which I understood a a little bit when you see what, uh, because it seems like all these Egyptian gods have avatars, and the one that he, uh, he is the avatar of this Egyptian god, and I use lowercase g, brother, um, is it's the one that weighs whether or not you are good or bad based upon what you've done in the past and what you will do in the future. And he seems to do something at the beginning that I guess he does as as penance uh, for some of the things he does. So he's like trying to, you know, make himself, you know, sort of like I, I, in the those Da Vinci Code movies or whatever. There's a guy who would self flagellate, you know, which basically oh, yeah. he's whipping himself, uh, which I guess is a common thing. People trying to punish themselves for the know the bad things. Even they do. in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, they used to, yeah, they talk he, about that. The, yeah. the priest did that because he knew he was a, for basically for wanting to be with the the, the problem. Yeah, so. yeah, it's like that self punishment. I think that's mm-hmm. what he's doing when you say I don't want to say what he's doing in the beginning because you ain't seen it yet, but. Uh, that's what I'm understanding from that after I kind of get to know the character in that first episode. Yeah. But tremendous first episode. There was even a nice little Easter egg that if I watch it a third time, I'm going to catch up on. But there is a, I forgot what you call those codes that you can, you know, take a picture with your phone and it'll take you to a website or something. Sure. I don't um, remember, but I know what like you're Like a QR about. code? Yeah. There is a QR code that's in the background. I thought, oh, that's kind of nifty. I guess it's probably the muse- part of the museum. It wasn't part of the museum. Apparently, you take you get it on this QR code. It'll take you to a digital version of the first appearance of Moon Knight. Oh, really? From what I've been reading, I was like, "That's cool." I so, remember reading some of that when I was a kid. That uh, a Moon Knight, and um, it seems like they had him. I don't remember Spider Man, but it was uh, some issue where he had teamed up with someone that I was reading already. Yeah. I don't remember who, which character it was. I don't think it was uh, Dark Hawk, but it was it was That'd someone cool. It was someone mm-hmm. like that though. Someone that I read a lot, and they were kind of always going through New York and mm. I just don't remember which one because I read as you remember so many that I was yeah. started catching up on I could see him easily teaming up oh yeah he was at the time they had a series uh, in Marvel where they would have Daredevil and they would have Dark Hawk and others uh, Marvel Knights Marvel perhaps? Knights but perhaps they that's did it the more darker they did the Punisher and others they yeah. would have yeah Moon Knight because mm-hmm. Moon Knight can be pretty brutal yeah when 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 provoked <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> we'll put it like that the, the only other thing i've seen where moon knight is teaming up with spider-man is the uh spider-man uh, it was the one where uh it was a it was a place i don't know i guess i had it on the xbox 360 i still have the game and i can't think of what it was called but it was where there was a symbiote invasion in new york and it was kind of open world uh, but there was a, a section of the game. Part of the story is uh, Moon Knight is kind of the one giving you missions and stuff, and you're kind of getting to work with him. And there's there's kind of some odd things, and Spider Man doesn't know you know whether he can trust everything. Because like I heard this guy can be a little he's a, you know, got some mental problems, so I don't know. He's saying a lot of weird stuff that I don't understand. But but, but all right, I'm gonna go do what he says that needs to get done. You know, but you know, you can kind of choose to trust him, and yeah, you can trust Moon Knight. I mean, he's, yeah. <laughs> he sounds a little weird when he's talking some stuff, but you know, he's he's handy. He's somebody you wanted as an ally because he'll whoop some tail. <laughs> He's a heck of a good fighter. The other show, the other thing I've been watching, have you been watching Halo? Yes, I've watched. only gotten to watch the first one so far. So you haven't watched the second episode? Not yet. Okay. Well, um, before diving into uh, my thoughts on the series, I did, uh, uh, since I've only played two games, and I, I get the only things I really uh, understand from the first couple of games is like the, there's a Covenant and the UNSC, 
And uh, the the Covenant wants this, this ring because they think it's a powerful weapon. And it turns out these rings are actually what's imprisoning something called the Flood. Yes, I remember that. Which are these scary little things that scurry about like evil alien zombies and destroy everything in their path. And make your voice sound weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love doing that. You know, I, I got to sound manly somehow because I, I sound like Mickey Mouse on a regular basis. Well, so yeah. So I have to do uh-huh. this. Sometimes. Although, that'll mess with my throat after. Well, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, there's pre-game events that I found uh, over at GameSpot actually has some of the stuff. The Halo, the Halo games started with Halo Combat Evolved, but the story of Halo Universe actually begins in like 15,000, or no, that's 15 million BCE, like 15 million years uh, before the actual events. Uh, but there's a whole long thing, but uh, like Halo, it, it, this goes into the Halo Wars, which I believe was a, uh, I think it was a real-time strategy game, Halo Wars. Uh, and that's the Covenant beginning destroying human outer colonies, decimating the insurrectionists as the UNSC desperately fought a losing battle while hiding the location of Earth from the aliens. And on a colony world called Harvest, the Covenant found a Forerunner artifact that detailed the location of other Forerunner technology. I think they might have used some of that concept. Now, granted, the writers of this have said that they did not use anything of the games. They didn't go into this new story. Uh, which some people were already upset, and I, I understand that. Yeah. If they don't get, you know, but I mean, they they've created the world. The only thing I found very odd about the world is the UNSC seems to be getting vilified because all these colonies are rebelling. But somebody did tell me on Facebook, says like, you know, there is a, there is mention that the uh, UNSC was pretty rough on keeping the colonies in line. So maybe somebody's just taking that and expanding on it because this, this the the TV series feels like it could be a prequel to the games. Well, plus which there's so many games at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's been we're going on for twenty something years. Five Halo games and Halo Infinite, as far as I know. It, I mean, it would be <laughs> very difficult to go with one story this and just now starting, and you're going this long after and you're, you're just now starting on it. I mean, that'd be hard to go through all the story. Yeah. Well, and I don't think it was the intention to just follow the story because people yeah. who have played through all the games would be like, I already know this story. Yeah, exactly. So they're giving them something different, but, you know, maybe maybe some things, I, you know, they wouldn't be careful not to change. Like, a lot of people were a little freaked out that Master Chief has spent most of the time, especially in the second episode, no helmet. Yeah. I saw that and, coming. And I, one of the things that's been kind of, uh, yeah, I, I figure they would probably have to do it Mandalorian style a little bit, but I would expect that he'd keep the helmet on more than have it off. Yeah. But uh, one thing I'm finding interesting, because now I don't know in the Halo games that they've ever mentioned that his name is John, but here's what I find funny. Anybody remember Demolition Man? What was Demolition Man's name? John Spartan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody knew what they were doing here, and I bet it's on purpose. Somebody must have been a fan of Demolition Man. It's like, hey, it's a Spartan. You know what his name's going to be? Master Chief is John. He's John <laughs> the Spartan. You know... Uh, there's already talks. The law, I don't know if it's going to happen now, but I don't know if it will. But there's already been talks that this actor would be a good Wolverine. He's really too tall. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. I mean, with he's that. got the. He's not a handsome looking dude, but he is a big, tough looking dude. <laughs> oh, the poor guy. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, he's he looks big. He kind of like the guy who's playing Punisher. He's not like what you'd call like a handsome looking no. dude, but he just looks tough. He looks. T- I didn't think he fit the the Punisher. In my opinion, yeah, fit. not not exactly, but, but he he did but a good he's job. He's a good Punisher. Yeah, you know? and yeah, and that's the guy who can play Master Chief. He's doing a really good job of being somebody who's had his hormones mess with the word to where he doesn't have emotions. Oh yeah, he's messed and, up. Well, what's cool is the second episode. Uh, you find one of one of his actual friends that he'd had that he had trained with who this guy escaped was played by the guy who's the sheriff in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, that's I was fun. like, hey, I know that guy. Ghostbusters Afterlife. He's the sheriff. Because I, I recognize him because he looks a little like Dave Chappelle, only stockier. Sure. So I you know, I just some of the facial features are just the same. But yeah, he's kind of a stockier guy. And I was like, Ghostbusters Afterlife, that's that guy. Uh the one thing that I, I uh I'm cautionary on on Hill, because overall I'm I, I, I don't. I'm not wild about it. I'm. I'm kind of. I'm intrigued by it, and me I'm too. watching. And it's the look of it is cool. When the Spartans walk, and I love the boom, boom, yeah, boom, and the armor and the action was pretty cool. The one thing I'm cautionary about is a lot of kids end up liking to play Halo, and I've seen people on Facebook. Oh yeah, I'm just letting my kids watch it. I don't know that it's appropriate for young children. No, yeah, uh, not please young. be careful. That I mean, this in that first episode. I mean, there's some blood splattering, very dark. exploding heads. There's legs getting severed, uh, and the second episode included some nudity. Oh, I this seen is that, yeah. not for kids. Yeah, it's very dark. I'll say that. Yeah, it's well, it, it's it's not that it looks dark, but it's just the story is. Well, it's heavy. It's 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 heavy. That's the word. Yeah, because dark is what I would call the Batman movies. <laughs> no, I, I just meant that. <laughs> but it's it's heavy. Yes, I, I was trying to 
play what? a game. Is there or something draw? wrong in the future where the atmosphere <laughs> yeah. is just? Okay. Sorry, I was trying to uh, d- play a game and draw a little bit while I was watching it. You know, it, I couldn't. It was too much to. It was too heavy, too much mm. to digest. While you, yeah. you know, and I was like, I can't do it. I have yeah. to watch this. Yeah, and it's and it's really cool seeing some of the vehicles. Oh, they're familiar with the games, the weaponry, the weaponry, the sounds from oh, the game. Man. I mean, they did a good a job of making you feel like you're inside when the, the Halo I, universe. I can't think of the name of it right now. I'm sure my nephew would slap me for it, but because um, I played it so many times with them, uh, Carson, I'm talking mm-hmm. about you. But whenever they had that uh, that weapon where the the little pink spikes were coming, the up, needler, you know, needler. Thank you. Yes. When it when when they had that, I was like, oh, oh yes. yeah. I love seeing some of my favorite weapons oh, popping up in fa- that game. And seeing like the Covenant Elite run around with those pistols that you can sh- yep, charge that's, it up. That's it, yeah. Ooh, man. I was like, so they did a good job of bringing it to life. The one thing I'm a little confused on is um, what they're going to do with uh, Cortana. Because yeah. Cortana was an AI that ran the ship and it was downloaded into Master Chief's armor, if yes. I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. It seems that, you know, they're going to introduce Cortana as something as another means to control the Spartans uh, and their brain. Like it's going to be a biological thing from the way it was brought up in the second episode. So they're definitely doing th- a lot of things different. And I think they're going to, some of the long term fans, I think, you know, I have seen a lot of anger, but I've also seen people say, like, you know, this is different, but this is kind of cool. I'm going to, I'm going along for the ride. And who knows? It I'm may not change. Near, yeah. I'm not near as excited with Halo as I am with Moon Knight. Moon Knight was fantastic. Halo is like, this is kind of cool. Let me just kind of just go with the flow here. Yeah. See what so, they're going to do. Because they may, by the time it's over, see, here's the thing I've learned with shows. It may be at frustrating at first, but then by the time it's done, it might be, wow, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. And then again, it's, by the end of it, you might very well be going, well, crud. <laughs> it's like, why did they do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you never know unless you give it a you try. Never, yeah. And it's definitely worth checking out if you got Paramount Plus. I don't know that I'd subscribe to Paramount Plus just to watch this. But oh, there's a lot of other There's a lot things. of other good stuff on mm-hmm. Paramount Plus. I mean, yep. you can watch all the Mission Impossible movies. Mm-hmm. And other things. And some so. Star Trek. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's your reason right there. Star yeah. Trek. Well, Picard. Well, I didn't even finish the first season. P- but Picard, whoop, I'm sorry. what was that? That's that my uh, uh, tray there. Picard uh, is a great show. I don't care for some of the language and all in it, but I'm going to tell you, Picard right now is worth the watch because I love the fact that you're getting to see those characters again, and they're, yeah. they're coming together with some of the other characters. I, I, I'm here. Q is back. He is in the this second season. season. I'll, I'll probably sit there and watch I, the first I, one, but the first season I couldn't. I'm having a hard I love, time getting into. I don't want to give anything away because because yeah. you know you know that they've aged. I mean that's obvious, right? Ooh, yeah. But, oh yeah. But that first episode of season two, Q shows up looking just like he did. Oh and, man! And I mean, I, same age from 1994. Wow. And all that, and and so and Picard on he suddenly ping, snaps his finger. He goes back to being old all of a sudden. He's yeah. Like, he's like. I did that for you. And you're like, oh, Q. And he's like, Q, leave me alone. <laughs> they, they go back to their bantering, and I love it. Oh, it's, yeah. Q was just one of the more exciting characters on Star Trek Next Generation. It, it's great to it. see, because they don't have all your Next Generation characters, but they have new characters with some of the old, and even some characters from some other shows, and and I, but that we know of, you know? And so that's it's a really good show. Yeah. I just don't necessarily like some of the language and other things, yeah. you know, but still. That's some of the stuff that kind of shut me off. I was like, eh. it's like, I'm kind of interested in this, but I'm, you know, I, I, I saw so many mixed reviews. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to be disappointed when I get to the end of this. But Picard. And what I've heard about Discovery, I don't know that I want to watch it I can't get all. into Discovery. Yeah. But I tried. Yeah. I really tried. But Picard is worth it in the long run. I'll I'll have to sit down on it. Well, I need to catch back up on Resident Alien. I started watching that yeah. one, and that's another one I don't think I'd let my kids watch if I had them. So, but Resident Alien has been funny. It, it, the second season they made some mistakes, but uh, it's still it's very plus it's Alan Tudyk. Yeah, he's I good. Mean, come on, he's a great. Actor. You gotta watch this for him. That's why I wanted to watch it. Really, it's like Alan Tudyk. It's so funny. And I remember going to like his panel at Planet Comic Con. He is just a hoot. Yeah, he's he, a lot of fun. He was. You know, were you with me that time? I, you might have been. Where he was actually, he had gotten a bunch of stuff from his hotel room and was throwing it away. He's like, "Here's the soap. I didn't open it yet." <laughs> yeah, I and he took that. the soap and then stuff. All the little, you know, stupid things that he just happened to have. He was giving away to people who asked questions. <laughs> you gotta love the guy. He's just so much fun. Uh, but anyway, so what we've been playing this week? Other than, of course, clearly you're still playing the WWE. But oh, yeah. I now I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago I played through a game called Control which uh, was made by Remedy, people who brought us Max Payne. And uh, they've recently, I found out that Remedy, I guess, uh, like Alan Wake was a game originally, it was an Xbox exclusive. 
but Remedy has been getting their rights back, and so to, they can put it on other systems, and so they've got Alan Wake remastered. Control made a lot of references to the events in Alan Wake, and I was not familiar with it, so uh, with my last paycheck, I, I uh, went over and used my GameSpot account, and I got me uh, a copy, a used copy of Alan Wake. And I finished it actually just today, this morning. And, you know, what's cool about it is it's done in six episodes. And it's almost like you're, because it's very, I, part of me want to say Twin Peaks. I never watched Twin Peaks, but I heard it's like this weird mysterious oh, I watched it. thing and kind of almost spooky. And that's what it was. It's like each episode. But when you're starting each next episode, they said they would go previously on Alan Wake. And it would show some of the cinematics <laughs> and clips of it, of what had happened previously. It was episodic. And yeah. It was very episodic. It was told in six episodes and even had a bit where it would stop and say end of episode two. And it would be playing a song <laughs> and the song, song the song would be something that if you listen to the lyrics related somehow or another and even at the the end of the entire story it's playing uh, Space Odyssey by David Bowie <laughs> which I don't want to give away the ending but it fits so well but this get very mysterious you basically you got to take that this is a, a guy who wrote thrillers and he's really famous for this I like this Alex Casey is his police hardened police detective character that he wrote all these stories about now, the reason why I find this interesting... Now, the game came out, I guess, 2010. Now, let's see. When was Chuck? The series? Chuck was... 2008? Kind of right just before. 2007, I I don't know if by the time they're developing this game, they would have... I think it's just coincidence, really. Um, but, so, John Casey, mm -hmm. his real first name was Alex. Hmm. Alex Casey. Yeah. The name of the character that, you know, that you uh, <laughs> Alan Wake was writing about. So, that I thought that was kind of fun, but... Uh, so, like, this mysterious thing, and Alan Wake has found that there's a manu pieces of a manuscript that apparently he's written, but he's realizing, this is a horror story. I don't usually write horror stories, but everything that he's writing is coming true, and it's darn right scary. And there's this dark entity that's, don't know what this is, but it turns people psychotic. And uh, a lot, of, it, it got frustrating. I was playing it on normal. I had to switch it over to easy, and even at easy, I was getting my butt kicked because <laughs> these people will come with like farming implements and attack you from behind. <laughs> you know, and basically, when you got a guy who's got like a scythe and just comes up, and they don't take one swing, they take four. They'll kill you like that. They're plowing you over. <laughs> oh yeah, you're getting plowed and 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 hacked, and you know. But then a guy shows up with a chainsaw, you know. <laughs> And he'll be a big guy that takes a lot to kill. And uh, in order to kill it, because they're infected with this darkness, you have you have a flashlight, and your flashlight is your best weapon. Do you see him get uh, infected? No, they're already infected. Well, you, there are some people you see get taken away, and you know you're going to fight them as a boss fight later. Because uh. the darkness will suddenly pull them. <laughs> and then when you see them again <laughs> later, they have their voices altered, and they're, ah, and there'll be a boss fight. Although nearly every battle is a boss fight. But you have to shine your flashlight on them, and uh, you actually pull the trigger to focus like your flashlight and it actually starts burning the battery off a little faster but you the light will push away the darkness and weaken them to after they're weakened and you've driven some of the darkness out then you can kill them because they just because you drive like the darkness way they, they haven't changed they're still called taken and they'll still come and kill you but at least they're vulnerable but before that when they're still have like this darkish shadowy thing over and over them you can't hurt them yeah. But there is some really cool weapons. You can get, like, flashbang grenades. And so you can throw there. It's a big flash. Well, something like wipe a bunch of them out. You get a flare gun, and the flare can, like, detonate, you know, wipe them out. Anything, like, anything with bright light is like a massive grenade. <laughs> and the only bits of safety you have in the night is finding a street lamp and staying underneath it. Because they won't come under that. Man, you're bringing some nightmares to life from when I was a That's child. That's what this game was. It's like walking in a nightmare. And Alan Wake, man, the whole time he's, he at first he's not sure that what he's seeing is real. And then when he gets kind of convinced, no, there's some stuff really happening. He even has this one guy who's basically one of the villain characters because he's got his own motives. He's like, oh, you've just been having bad dreams because your wife is dead. You know, his wife was taken away by the darkness but not killed. But you find out why later, but I'm not going to say where because I don't want to ruin the story. But the story of this was dark it and creepy. sounds like a Twilight Zone episode or something. Like, exactly. Mi mixed with Alfred. Exactly. Uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Albert Hitchcock. Yeah, or Hitchcock. There's Hitchcock reference. You have swarms of birds that attack you, brother. Oh man! And I'm thinking this. It's Hitch, I'm in a Hitchcock world uh, that's somewhere. And there's Remedy loves to have TVs on or radios or whatever that you can go and watch something on. They did it in Max Payne. Well, on these you turn on TV and you can watch episodes of a show called 
Night Springs, <laughs> which is supposed to be this old black and white show. And the, the episodes uh, are like a minute, two minute or whatever. And the stories will be some weird science, otherworldly happening. Or like one of them is like this guy who's trying to prove that he's because of this thing that he's got plugged in, these things he's got powered on. He's got a thing. He's putting a gun to his head. Click. He's like, look, I'll show you. It's fully loaded. But I've created a field around myself of quantum whatever and to where this gun will never go. And one of the students in the university classroom accidentally moves and accidentally unplugs it right before. Oh. And that's like, that's the, the, so the episodes are creepy, scary, weird science stuff like, like the Twilight Zone. Yeah. And like, ooh. But the, like, the weird thing is it turns out Alan Wake has written some episodes of Night Springs. And people in the town of Bright Falls that all this story is happening said like, you know, there's a lot of people thought that Night Springs was based on our town. Because oh, wow. we do have some weird stuff that seems to happen around here. And now the concept of control, if there's certain places that are, uh, they call it like AWE, it's like a after an altered world event. And they've been studying the town of Bright Falls because there's some sort of altered it, world. It's called what now? An alter, no. al- altered world event. So it's AWE, not AEW. <laughs> right. It's an AWE, alter, altered world event. Something happened from another world. And there are references in control all over the place to the events in this game because Remedy is making a shared universe. And there's, I guess, another one called uh, Quantum something or whatever that uh, I uh, I haven't played that. I think it might be available for PS4. I might have to check it out, too. physics. But it's all, like, connected. But the cool thing is they like to use a lot of the same actors. And a lot of the characters in a game now are starting to where they'll look like the actor. Oh, that's like cool. for anyone familiar, like Max Payne, and he's a British mm. guy, so it's not actually his voice, but he does this voice. You know, you've seen, you've played Max Payne, oh, right? Yeah. And the Years guy with his raised eyebrow, he still works for Remedy. He's actually one of their, you know, game storytellers and whatnot. But he's famous for just making that look. And even like there was a 25th anniversary of Max Payne that they put up on YouTube, and he's like, "I have the outfit," and he had like the the yellow vest and all the kind of stuff. And he says, "And here's the face." <laughs> and he does the face but the guy who voiced Max Payne he has had a role in control uh, I heard his, his voice even in uh, in this and the cool thing is because they can now motion capture and film people and actually capture your face they have you know the actor who is you know Alan Wake uh, I don't know if he's necessarily the voice but he is what Alan Wake looks like has gotten to you know there, there were QR codes in the game that I scanned those and took me to a YouTube video that was similar to videos in control where it's the actor who is the, what Alan Wake looks like and even some TVs come on by themselves and you see Alan Wake who's trapped in a room that's in the cabin who is talking uh, and of course because it's Remedy they like to uh, narrate from the, the hero's perspective which works so well for this because it's a writer and you feel like you're you're being narrated his book you know, but oh, it was just a tremendous experience. It's harder than snot, though. <laughs> I gotta say, especially at one point, the darkness realized it doesn't have to possess people; it can possess objects, and so it decides, "I'm going to throw a car at you now, <laughs> or a train car." And you know, it takes a lot longer when you shine a light on that thing to get it to go away. And when you got a train car being flung at you, and you're trying to shine this flashlight on, like, please stop, because it'll disappear. Uh, you, you, sometimes you you got to remember you have a dodge button, and you better get out the way because you're about to get hit by the car. And, you know, that's it for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, you know, barrels getting thrown at you, tires getting thrown at you, and you can't just shoot those. You, and you, you're really just trying to shine a light or run for it. And it even says, like, if you find yourself being overwhelmed, run for the nearest light source. Find some light and run for it. Of course, sometimes they're sneaky and like, oh, see, this lamp isn't on. You need to start this generator. And they have this whole little mini game where you have to hit the button at just the right times, like three times, to pull the thing to start up this generator before the light will come on for you. And so while you're trying to do that, you know, hey, I have this big sickle and let me just slice you to ribbons. So, yeah, the bad guys don't care that you're trying to run for your life. Yeah. And he's uh, he's just a regular writer. The, the adrenaline wears off really fast when you try to sprint and run away and he'll stop and he'll be like, <sighs> and you hear him kind of breathe and he slows down. I'm like, we can't slow down, Alan. Those guys are right behind us. Come on, man. You know, so, oh, it was a struggle, but it, that's what made it suspenseful and scary and and, uh, and it would try to warn you with something like this big of the musical tone, like when you like something horrible is about to come out of the closet, you'd hear in a movie or something, and it'll show, it'll slow things down and show you maybe there's something's behind you. But once it's established that there's a bad guy around, it won't tell you when they're right behind you and about to hit you four times. <laughs> so, and that's what got frustrating is like, okay, I'm doing okay, then boosh, 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 and dead. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah, totally worth playing uh, this remastered. I think there's supposed to be some extra content, but I haven't seen where I could download it. But there is, a, in the, in the, when you look at the trophies on the PlayStation, there are these two other things, and uh, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to get them. I think maybe they'll come along later, because I think they just released the remastered here uh, within the last few months. Um, so, But that's what I've been playing this week, 
and I tell you, I had a good time. Now that I'm done with it, I bought myself a copy of WWE 2K. There you go. So I'm going to go play with that. Although I, I got a lot of other games I got to play with, too. Like uh, I've got uh, The Evil Within 2, which I may save for next October. I haven't finished Far Cry uh, 4 yet, though. I really should go back and play some of that. But wasn't having as much fun as I did at Far Cry 3. Oh, Mr. Far Cry 3 Gamer. Was so much fun. <laughs> Bring me a game. Boom, 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 boom. All right. Uh, I do, though, at this point, and hopefully I'm going to hit the right button. You know I always hit the wrong button with this. I got the right button. There you go. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring I need to the change that. I'm not spanning the Disney Universe no more. And entertainment. Entertainment universe. This is news from around Neverland. But only certain entertainment. Yes. You know. It's anything would be the fandom that we're into. That's right. Uh, for game news, instead of going to see what's what's coming out that I normally would, especially at the beginning of the month, uh, you know, I, I like to check a list of what's coming out this month. But what I want to share this week, uh, PlayStation just announced. I mean, they, and I don't know when this is going to happen. I did not see a launch date. But you know, PlayStation has PlayStation Plus, which is where you can play online. That's about ten dollars a month, you know, average. Uh, then they've also had a PlayStation Now, which has been a subscription service where you get to stream games. Well, they decided they needed to combine these. So now that the new uh, account choices are PlayStation Plus Essential, and that provides the same benefits that a PlayStation Plus members are getting today, such as two monthly downloadable games, exclusive discounts, cloud storage for saved games, and online multiplayer access. And there are no changes for existing PlayStation Plus members in this tier. So your account will roll right into a PlayStation Plus Essential. Yeah. Then uh, now the price for that it's nine ninety nine monthly twenty four ninety nine quarterly fifty nine ninety nine yearly that's the United States of course that'll be different prices in Europe United Kingdom and Japan because different money types and stuff uh, but then now now there's PlayStation Plus Extra provides all the benefits from the Essential tier adds a catalog of up to four hundred there's a star next to that uh, or asterisk of the most enjoyable PS four and PS five games including blockbuster hits from our PlayStation Studios catalog and third party partners. Games in the extra tier are downloadable for play, which I, you know, before I was streaming it like a Netflix. Uh, this is going to be fourteen ninety nine monthly or thirty nine ninety nine quarterly or ninety nine ninety nine yearly, hundred dollars. And then PlayStation Plus Premium. This one provides all the benefits from essential and extra tiers, adds up to three hundred and forty asterisk again additional games, including PS three games available via cloud streaming. A catalog of beloved classic games available in both streaming and download options from the original PlayStation, PS2, and PSP generations. Offers cloud streaming access for original PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games offered in the extra and premium tiers in the markets where PlayStation Now is currently available. Customers can stream games using PS4 and PS5 consoles and the PC, which I, I was doing that with PlayStation Now before when I had that account. Uh, which I've been wanting to reactivate. I just haven't yet. Time limited game trials will also be offered in this tier, so customers can try select games before they buy. So when a new game comes out, and you're like, I don't know if I'd like that. Well, let me try it out. You can. Which That's actually, nice. I use a lot. When Control had first come out, I had tried it, which was like, mm, I like this. I'll have to when that when I get a chance, I'm going to have to buy a copy. And I did, and I've played it through. And now look what happened. I've went and played Alan Wake through this. You know, <laughs> so you know, it, it, they made money. Now this is going to cost you seventeen ninety nine a month, or forty nine ninety nine quarterly, or one hundred nineteen ninety nine for a year. I like having a nice yearly option, but that's a lot of money I got to set aside for you know to get going. Because I am still trying to save up for PS Five, but I'm like, I kind of want to get this account and get going and. Granted, I got a lot of games that I own that I haven't played yet. But yeah, so this was just announced. Uh, and it does not say, however, uh, when they're going to do this. Um, new PlayStation Plus game subscription service by the end of the first half of 2022. So I'd say it should be having this, you know, first half is June. It'll come to an end. So we should have this out by June. Good. Exciting, exciting, exciting. All right, now I got, uh, oh, a game announcement. Now, see, this is, this is what happens when I fall behind. As I have a game announcement that you probably already know about. Yeah, we saved the world a few times. But between that, we provided a needed service to the masses. That's where you come in. We're passing the torch, or better yet, passing the particle thrower, giving you the tools. Now let's see if you have the talent. 
nothing strange. Keep your head up and your equipment charged. We're a team working together to watch each other's back. Now I know you're still a ghost-busting trainee, but there's much more here than meets the eye. Take a look at this. You have the chance to see firsthand what exists on the other side. <laughs> Catching ghosts is only the half of it. So you want to play as a ghost? I'd like to see you try to take on my team. Oof. Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed. Coming uh, by the end of the year, and you know, hey, I'm going to start playing PS4 online, and PS5 online eventually, so you and I can be playing that one. I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. This reminds me a lot of the Left 4 Dead games, mm -hmm. where when you, you play it together, somebody can play as the zombie monsters or whatever, so people can play it as a ghost. Uh, that sounds fun. Oh, my gosh. And then, of course, you can you basically get to create your own Ghostbuster. And I, what I love about this is it's spiritual successor to the old, uh, what, what, 2008, 2009 mm -hmm. uh, Ghostbusters game. It looks like it plays similar to that. But it also fits right in with Ghostbusters Afterlife of picking up with Winston, starting up a new yeah, Ghostbusters. It. So, oh my gosh, this looks so awesome. I'm so super, super excited. He turned on his Grover one. voice. That means he's super excited. Near? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Far. <laughs> okay, now, I, you know, I, 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 did, I did mention that, you know, Disney kind of left me, but this is still pretty cool. So, uh, BenBuildsLego.GumRoad.com. Uh, he released... Uh, it's taking some pictures. I guess you can purchase some of these uh, sets. Um, but these are like, I don't think they're like Lego license. It's just he'll he'll sell you all the parts you need and the instructions he have. But uh, basically, he's created little, very small versions with just some of the small Lego pieces where you could build sections of, basically a Disney World thing where you build the all of the, some of the main iconic things like the uh, Tree of Life. That's cool. Uh, Spaceship Earth, uh, the Castle, and a Hollywood Tower of Terror. Uh, Curse of the Black Pearl. He's got another set where there's the Black Pearl. Uh, he's got a Disneyland Paris set, but they're like miniature sets that he's uh, he'll sell you the parts and the instructions on how to build these. Uh, and I just somebody had shared that on Facebook, and I thought that's really really cool. Uh, so yeah, he's you know getting the parts is one thing, but you know having the instructions. Here's something else that was announced that uh, this is just kind of good to know. You're going to recognize this voice. Hello, Star Wars fans. Thank voice. you for all your incredible support and response to Obi-Wan Kenobi. I have some important news. Our premiere date is moving just a couple of days from Wednesday to Friday, May the 27th. But here's the exciting part. The first two episodes will premiere together. So make sure you tune in to both episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, streaming Friday, May the 27th, exclusively on Disney+. Plus. There you go. So yes, that was kind of just a quick announcement that they decided to push back the uh, release date a couple of days. But they said, oh, don't worry, we're going to give you two episodes on the first day. I think I can handle that. I think I can handle that. Thank you very much. I'm quite happy. Oh, and there's something else coming to... Yeah, you know, once again, I said Disney's left me, but they're still making some stuff I like. Ooh. Ron Howard, Brian Grazier, teaming up for a documentary about Jim Henson with full participation of Muppet Creators family. I was watching some of your Jim Henson stuff. Yeah, something, Jeremy, did you put on one of the things on you my, shared My Plex server. The I've Plex? got some Muppets stuff I, on something there. Something you had on there that I had never seen before. Well, yeah, it's the, it was an old television special where they uh, paid tribute to Jim Henson. Mm -hmm. which, and I, uh, I, I remember, don't know if I've ever watched all of it. Interestingly enough, back then, I heard they were going to do one, and I don't know if it came on TV the night that I went to church or whatever it was. I'd never seen it before. And so I was really glad to see it. That was real nice. Mm hmm It'll make you cry because I've heard oh, I've cry. heard the audio. <laughs> I've heard the audio, and when they get to the point, it's like, "Wow, so who is this Jim person?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, oh he's he's gone." It did make me tear up. I'll be honest. And, oh, <laughs> just I think I've seen clips of just even that moment. I'm getting tingles. Yeah, give me a minute. 
And when I heard the uh, newer voice of Kermit, which I've never was yeah, a big oh, fan. Yeah, Kermit but, walks in. But he walked in because the, the, the way they were doing it, mm-hmm. I honestly thought Kermit wasn't going to show up. Because, you know, I mean, what were they going to do? They didn't have another Kermit voice yeah. yet that I knew of. Yeah, and they, then, that's how they revealed him. And then he came in and goes, hi there. At the end, you know, of course, I, I didn't care for the secondary voice as much. But yeah. he grew on you eventually. Yeah, we but, got used to him is what happened. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. But still, to me, it's the classic, I'm lower, you know voice that was better because that's what we knew yeah and yeah. you know that basically that is jim henson kermit is jim henson yeah, yeah. That's, that's it it's kind of like how mickey mouse is walt that is that's yeah that's, yeah that original ah mm-hmm. ah you know that that's the, the kind of lower i just love it it's yeah. it is it's exactly right you have it right yeah but henson died in 1990 at age 53 among his muppet creations were kermit the frog miss Piggy, and sesame street characters including mm-hmm. big bird cookie monster and Bert and Ernie. He also directed the innovative <laughs> fantasy films The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth. Oh, yes. And uh, now I don't know when he this is. I mean, I, I think they've just gotten started on this thing. Uh, so give it a little time. Uh, they're working. Uh, it's being produced by Imagine Documentaries for Disney branded television under the Disney original documentary banner. But this was coming. No release date or distribution plan for the film has yet been announced. So I love that guy. Keep your ears here and I'll tell you as soon as I learn something. I love the Funko Pop I have of him. Uh, yes, or he's there got a Kermit. He's got a little Kermit yes. on his I just love him. He's great. Oh, dang it. Now I got more sad news. Uh, I had yes. to look up what this was. Bruce Willis has been, was well, I guess he was diagnosed with asphasia a long, or aphasia. Uh, and so he's stepping away from acting because aphasia, uh, it, it affects his brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's 67 years old anyway. Go ahead and retire, you know. But it affects his ability to communicate. He doesn't always understand, or he, he's that's. I've, and I've heard for years people complain about they had to feed him his lines, but it's because he was having he couldn't memorize. He was having troubles because of the aphasia, and so I think a lot of the people that were complaining about him, uh, that's like, oh, here's later years. It's just been rougher to work with. It's like I think it's because he was suffering from this, but he was trying to keep working. So for all the people that was fussing at him, I think maybe people are going to be like, oh, I get it now. I am so sorry. Uh, but we're gonna miss you, Bruce. I mean, he's he did a lot of great, great mm-hmm. movies, and uh, and that's uh, it's almost like when you lose, uh, like hey, my grandmother had, uh, uh, well, she had part of it was dementia, but Alzheimer's. When you, know, you start to deteriorate mentally, well, then so you have you moments do. where everything's fine, but you know, it's it's, it's really sad, you know. But uh, you know, he we le- he left a good body of work, and you know, we wish good old Bruno well. So yeah, he did a lot of really good good films that we really enjoyed. There's a know? lot of them he did that I I love. My favorite is always going to be Die Hard. I knew you was going to say that. Oh, I was about to say true. Yippee-ki-yay, brother. Because the fact is, and I have every episode of Moonlighting, um, you know, but Moonlighting started it. It it really did. That's what really changed life because he was an unknown before that. He yeah. was a complete unknown. Yeah. So that started the whole thing, and then, but then Die Hard did it because that he was, was so good in Moonlighting too. Really, he was. was. Because he was an unknown, complete unknown. They, no one expected it. And then he went from that to uh, Die Hard, which no one expected to do well. It was, uh, And then that changed everything. I mean, he became yeah. a big... I mean, that changed even the action movies. It changed the whole industry of that you didn't have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. You didn't have to be a nothing but muscle. You know, you just, just, just every, like, every man kind of guy. Just like Michael Keaton as Batman changed, yeah. changed yeah. that industry. People don't always think that through. It's true. And know those muscles on that body of I'm talking about Michael Keaton here. That was not supposed to be his muscles. <laughs> that was armor. Back then, people thought that. But I, I bet Michael Keaton did to take some time to get into some sort of oh, shape. He did, that, you bit, know, yeah. to you know, I wanted you know, well, you know, of course, it's not as much as like you know, say some of the people who are you know being put in tights. They're yeah. like, all right, I'm going to yeah, buff out. Like Chris, you know, Chris Reeve, yeah. Zachary Levi did. You know, yeah. he spent some time in the gym before playing Shazam. Chris even Reeve though he was, did, you know, was puffed up. Chris, Chris Reeve, Reeve, yeah. Oh man, he had to put in a lot he put of shape. In, Brandon Routh did as well yeah. before he played Superman. So yeah, Br- oh yeah, Bruce Willis though. He did a, and he he could do just about, and it has been able. He's still with us, but he's been able, he's been in so many things. He's been in comedy, a mm-hmm. lot of comedy. He's been yeah. He's been in some great films. and suspense, like suspense. the Sixth Sense. Oh, wow. that was a great flick. Oof. That was a great great movie, man. <sighs> yeah, and and Unbreakable. I love him. The Unbreakable movies. I only saw the first one. Well, I got them all, but yeah. that's he's so good in it. Yeah. He just because he just I tell you what he's outstanding. He, he's he was good, really good at being that relatable every man. Mm-hmm. Where because you know in Unbreakable he's like he even though he has all this evidence he has a hard time believing like I'm some sort of superhero thing until he embraces it at the end and uh, but uh, that's even what made Die Hard work as he was so much regular we could relate to him and the situation he's in we at times we feel his panic and you know when he steps on the glass on a bare foot you know we we feel it. 
even in Pulp Fiction, uh, mm. even in Pulp Fiction, he's kind of the underdog. Yeah. And, but yet, I love the part. Look, I'm not just fine lot of stuff in this film. Right, but right. I love the part where he grabs that sword. <laughs> and uh, because he knows there's a guy being well uh, taken advantage of, we'll say, yeah. in the other room. And he's like, what am I going to do here? And he looks up and he's seeing the things and get a bat. Uh, that, then he looks up, he sees that sword. He's like, yeah. And he, and he's like holding <laughs> his I hand. I barely remember. I've seen, I've seen the movie a couple of times, but I'm, you know, I'm not a big fan of it. He's, I'm not a Tarantino fan, guys. No, I'm, I understand. But when he he grabbed, I don't do like severe heart art. But when he's like grabbing that. that sword, he's testing that like, hey, and he gets back to goes. He goes, it tells that guy, you know, grab it for the gun. He's like, yeah, come on. That, that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, he's so great. The one thing I remember about that, like him and the, and the, oh, I forgot the actor's name who played Marcellus Wallace, but they, they you know, they, they don't like each other generally. They've had issues. Oh, yeah. But when they have that acknowledgement, like, you know, I'm cool with you now. Yeah. You just saved my life. Uh, we're, 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 we're square. Ving Rames. Ving Rames, yeah. Oh, he's a great actor. Ving Rames is great. Now, he, every time I think of it, so, I want Arby's. Arby's, yeah. Yeah. Do we the have meats. the meats. <laughs> yeah, Bing Rames, he's, he's the he's man. He's well, the man. and they were together again. And um, uh, what was the other films they were in? Well, I know Bing Rames has been in Mission Impossible movies. He's oh, awesome he's, in those. He's, he's so good. He's so good. Another guy, uh, another film that he was in, talking about Bruce Willis, he was in yeah. that. Uh, even though it wasn't one of my favorites, but he was great in it. And that was Armageddon. Yeah, it wasn't a great movie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But <laughs> it was he was not a great movie. But he was great. Yeah, because the part where he basically goes to die to save well everyone. Yeah, but save the world. His daughter though. Uh, that Don't want to close my eyes. Yeah. Well, when he goes and looks at it, looks over there uh, to Ben Affleck at the time was to, uh, and he's doing that because she he knew she loved him. I was mm-hmm. like, see, that was pretty cool moment because of like that. Also, I liked him in at the same time. I think it was the same year, even. What was it called? Babylon? Not Babylon. What was it? Uh, well, I know Deep Impact was like the same almost. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> it was a similar movie. But no oh, Bruno in that one, though. The movie where like, you want to say Babylon 5, but it don't seem like it's right. It's where Gary Oldman was a, a villain. There's a it's a futuristic movie. Oh, uh, the Fifth Element. Fifth the Element. Fifth Element. There's one for, yeah, I don't know if Brian has always listened to my show, but I know Brian of The Real Brian Show loves that movie. It's a fun film. Yeah. It's goofy, it's fun. Plus, but it's fun. Plus, Gary Oldman. Oh, Gary Oldman, you gotta I love mean, him. Gary Oldman is just the man. Seriously. One of the greatest actors of all time. Yes, and serious. I always thought he'd be yes, a great indeed. Zod. You know, he would have been tremendous Zod. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I and still re- love Terrence Stamp, though. Oh, he, Terrence Stamp is the best. Yeah. But if you had to get a modern, in my opinion, yeah. he would have been. Gary Oldman, if he'd been a little, if they'd have done it when he was a little younger. Mm-hmm. Now he's kind of, he was really too old to be serious black, really. Yeah. A lot of their adults were too old for what the character should become but, in the you ball, know. book, but yeah. Either but anyways, way. I need Bruce to keep Willis, the show moving. You. Yep, we love you, brother. Thank you for entertaining us, and we hope you have a good life. Mm-hmm. James Gunn, director of the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. You heard me right. Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. What? Promises that the straight-to-streaming chapter in the Marvel Cinematic Universe will introduce multiple new characters. Oh, that'd because, be fun. Because you know they want to keep the Guardians franchise uh, probably... Because you know, a lot of the Marvel Universe, they're trying to reset and get some different characters and stuff. Uh, so I'm pretty sure... <laughs> and this apparently had a, um, a, a stuff on Twitter where he was talking about this. But yeah, who knew this was coming? I didn't. A holiday special coming to Disney+. Plus. Now, I don't know if it's this year, next year. But you know... Because I mean, there's... You know, I think Guardians... I thought I heard something about Guardians 3 might have finished filming as well. But you know, this is smart because for a couple of reasons. In the, I didn't realize all this because I wasn't deep into the Guardians of the Galaxy before the movies. Right. Um, I'd heard of it. I knew it because when I used to get Wizard Comics and all that. And I'd Wizard read magazine, about it all. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. That's what I meant, magazine. Anyway, I knew of some of it. But one thing I have known, especially since the movies, and looking into it, uh, even with some of the toy lines and other things, there's a lot more characters in the comic books than there are in the movies because yeah. they can't put them all in the movie. Right. But now that knowing that, you can see that they do need to introduce more. Plus, with the uh, actors will be moving on to other things. Mm-hmm. They need to have new characters getting it's involved. Contracts and stuff. Heck, you know, if it were me, I'd be like, yeah, I don't care. I keep signing a contract. Let me keep playing this. I'm having fun, you know. Some of them are, yeah. I'm assuming, because, yeah. you know, there's some people that... You know, I think it was very wise because even in the first movie, you had new characters coming in, and the, in the mm-hmm. second one, you had another new character coming in, yeah. and always bringing all those extra. Well, heck, even at the uh, the end of the second one, we got the original Guardians that were kind of introduced. Mm-hmm. At least all the Stallone. characters that they were. Yeah, Stallone is playing with like the original dudes. A guy who at one point said he would never get involved with comic book type stuff. Remember? Well, he did Judge Dredd. Yes, and he just, did. And I thought that was kind of fun. It's not a greatest it, movie. No, it's kind of fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. 
You, I am the law. I am the law. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it was fun. Him and Rob Schneider, you know, it's... Yeah, it is what it that is. was apparently another movie where they ticked everybody off because he took the helmet off and in the comics he's never yeah, done but it. But what are you going to do? Speaking of guys wearing helmets, Sabir Pirzada, who was one of the writers for Moon Knight, and we're talking about the television series, is eyeing his next Marvel Cinematic Universe property as he is developing a Nova project for Marvel Good. Studios. Phase 4 has been an interesting period for these ever-growing MCU as they look to branch out on their massive franchise. This is from Screen Rant. Nova could be cool. I and, mean, they, and they've been building it up for a while since yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. You've, you've had the Nova core, but now we get that full tilt Nova guy. I mean, well, man, the moment I saw that they had them on Guardians of the Galaxy, I said, oh, man, I can't wait to see him. Yeah. <laughs> Get to see some some real serious you know, Nova powers. Another one that I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, Adam Black. Um the or was that his Adam name? Warlock? Adam Warlock, I mean. Yeah. Because Third the, movie, actor, we should see him. the actor uh, who's playing him. Um, well, he looked like a goofball in that film. I can't think of the name, but he looked like a weird goofball kid in the film with Jennifer Aniston and uh, all that dude from Saturday Night Live. But, I have no but, idea. But then I saw a film, or a TV show on Netflix where he was playing a, a Viking. And I'll tell you what, he has changed so much. He's built up muscle. He's a older, of course, but mm-hmm. he'll be good. Adam Warlock, he will be perfect for it, but you would never guess. We may have said something about it in a previous episode, but I just don't remember. But speaking of goofball actors and superhero movies, Ezra Miller, please, uh, uh, somebody help that dude. I was never a fan. He needs he needs some help. Well, I mean, I, I he's he's a good actor. Yeah, he's a good actor in the, the and apparently in the new Flash movie he is supposed to be better, but he got himself arrested, had some drunken yeah. problems. Uh, he need, he's you know being young and you start getting famous yeah. and the the alcohol and stuff is getting. Uh, I, I want him to get some help. I'm very sorry to hear that before he me. destroys himself, but and ruins his career and his life. Uh, I'm just saying, I was never a fan of him as as the Flash in that first one. Yeah. I liked him as the villain in Harry and, Potter. And the, yeah, because the Fantastic Beast one. Well, he's not really a villain in the Fantastic. Well, maybe this third one, he seems a bit more villainous. But yeah. uh, I don't want to say exactly who he turns out that he, he is. He he looked villainous to me. Yeah. in the in the first one because it looked like he was heading that direction. Yeah. Well, he couldn't really control, and he just yeah. yeah. So I I wouldn't call him like the real villain because you still have Grindelwald. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he he's like a pawn. Yeah. In this whole thing, but a very dangerous one. And I I think he's doing a great job in those movies. And that you know I so he's got some depth and uh, some ability to. He's act, a good but, actor. Yeah. But I boy the, him his arrest that uh, that news came out this week. That's I, a shame. I I worry for him that he's. You know, he can go down a destructive path, and I, I hope somebody sits and talks with him, because sort of like a, 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 in a previous incident that that happened, uh, Denzel Washington, yes. you know, standing up and say, hey, you know, whenever you're on top, when the devil shows up. Oh, amen. And that Thank is you, a Denzel. fact. Thank you, that Denzel. Thank you, Denzel. That is a fact. Yes. It just, I can say this to anyone that comes to spiritual matters, it comes to your job, it comes to your, your love life, it comes to almost anything. Just when you think that you can't be knocked down Look out! There's going to be a knocking at the door. Yeah, and that's where you can get with the most corruption and, the, and pride does horrible things. We said that in that mm-hmm. verse we read at the beginning of there. Mm-hmm. But getting on back to some more fun news: Star Trek: The Motion Picture, the director's edition, to premiere on Paramount Plus on First Contact Day. Now, First Contact Day, uh, right right now, uh, I'm figuring that's going to be near the end of May. Because uh, I did see also here, Fathom Events and Paramount Pictures bring it to theaters for an exclusive two-day event on May 22nd and May 25th. Tickets will go on sale uh, Friday, April the 8th at FathomEvents.com. This, uh, now, I you know the motion picture, I think I've seen once, maybe twice. Uh, oh, but here we go. Uh, so I it's going to be edition. debuting exclusively on Paramount Plus on April 5th. Which yeah. means, uh, hey... Just a few days away from us recording this in celebration of First Contact Day, and uh, now I did. Uh, I think Clinton Albert of the um, the Comedy Forecast podcast. I was talking to him in just a little bit because uh, he's the one that brought this to attention. He posted to Facebook because he's a, he's a huge Trek fan, yeah. and he's even got a. I think was it Trekking Talking Trek. He's got another podcast that's all about Star Trek. Uh, but he says he's he actually seen this. I mean, the cut has been available, I guess, at some point. And he's seen it. He says, like, uh, it, 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 says it doesn't necessarily change things, but it no. is, it's much better to see it. And he says, because you know, I said, does it really improve the movie? Uh, you've got a copy of it, yeah. I guess. Of the, yeah. So I'm going I'm to check it out. I'll, I'll sit and watch it. Because uh, he says it does make some of the V'ger stuff a little better. Yeah, just a little bit. And But um, it's long. It's long. Well, heck, the original movie was long because it's so drawn out. Oh, yeah. Well, the, well, here's what I found out. They didn't have much time to edit it. They, they basically mm. got done and boom. Put it out? Yeah, almost identical. I mean, almost immediately. My goodness. It was like, 
uh, we, we're, we're done filming. But well, here's the thing about the director. Um, we love him. But Gene Roddenberry Gene, directed that one, didn't he? Yeah, and yeah. Gene, God bless you, buddy. We love you. But man, he I mean, they were just so thrilled to have the film. And originally, was, but here's the other thing. That was supposed to be a TV film. It was yeah. supposed to be a back to back into the uh, the television. It was going to become a show. It was yeah. be, and then it was made into a movie because of Star Wars, really. Yeah. And boom, we put Star it Star Wars gave the opportunity for Star Trek to make a comeback with a vengeance. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. And I, well, more like a wrath. Yes. <laughs> I'll say it before and I'll say it again. That poor Vulcan who became sludge in the <laughs> in the beaming over. He was he was supposed to be the uh the taking over of Spock. Mm. And <laughs> that poor soul. <laughs> oh man. Uh speaking of other stuff coming to the theater and we've we've asked for this for I don't know how long. Voltron. So, following a string of Hollywood wins, anime is ready to take on the movie biz once again with help from Voltron. A new scoop from the Hollywood Reporter confirmed several major studios are circling a live-action adaption of the classic series. Yes! We've been waiting for so long, now, and I'm so thrilled. But but hang on. Oh, crud. They're circling. They're looking at an adaption. That's progress, but think of Masters of the Universe and how long we sat. And that circled, and they started it and then pulled back. So don't get overly excited, but I was like, hey, it's progress. People are looking at it. Do you realize, folks, I'm going to be dead by the time you finally bring this out? <laughs> all the Masters of the Universe is back on. We've got a He-Man cast again, but of course, this is not the first time we've had a He-Man cast, no. and then all of a sudden the film, film falls apart. Dun, 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 dun. Here's some cool news that I think you'll like. For those that were fans of Jedi Fallen Order, uh, apparently in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you can now buy a hilt that matches Cal Kestis's hilt. When, when you start the game, I mean, you get to customize his hilt throughout the game, but uh, you can now get his hilt in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which I thought that oh, was pretty cool. Because cool I did finish that game uh, last year, I think. Yeah, last year I think I finished it. Uh, and I'm hearing you know, that we're going to, should be hearing fairly soon about its sequel. Oh, and here's okay. I can skip this. But is it the, the same crew Disneyland. that made it? Huh? Is it the same people and crew who made the first one? I would imagine so. I haven't got a whole lot of details on that one. Uh, oh, here's I just can touch briefly. Uh, Christopher Lloyd apparently is going to be in the third season of The Mandalorian, which I've heard they've wrapped filming on that one as well. Oh, I'd heard that too. Christopher Lloyd. Don't know who he's playing. I don't want to know. I'm going to be surprised. Uh, well, that's exciting. We're taking you to the future. I meant the past. I mean. <laughs> and here's some news that is like, ugh, Amazon closes a $8.5 billion acquisition of MGM. Now, this oh. is not unheard of. I mean, Comcast already bought Universal. I mean, yeah. some of these tech companies are getting big enough, and they're buying studios, but Amazon... Of course, now, this is good for people who are like Amazon Prime members who get the, their yeah, stuff because that, yeah. the MGM library is going to open up to them. Um, and I guess they've talked about this back in May last year. Uh, and But... I don't know what well, I don't know what Amazon's going to do with MGM, but I don't know it's almost scary seeing like a lot of these old studios being eaten up by tech companies. I'd much much rather well I don't know not anymore maybe not so much but Disney was buying all these other movie studios and stuff. Oh, well, Disney used to have the deal with MGM. I mean, we that's why we had yeah, the MGM we did studios. Have, yeah, for the longest time for it was Disney Hollywood. But now you know, think of that great MGM library that you've maybe maybe enjoyed on so many different channels and you know Turner Classic Movies or whatever. Oh yeah. Imagine all those films are going to be taken away from where you've been watching it and only going to be on Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And we'll, we'll see both. what the effects of MGM Studios with being in the hands of Amazon. But anyways, uh, we've been going on for an hour and I need to keep the show rolling. We still got the trailer park to visit. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that show. Come here. Oh. Oh. Get him on. Oh. Get that gator. Ah. Yeah. Ah. The Neverland Trailer Park. I meant to play this trailer a long time ago, so that's why I'm just going to do it now. These rings signify the commitment. So help me, Thomas! Sorry, sorry. Life or death situation, I need you to use the ring to save me. Like, right now. Snow, my God. Oh, boy. (laughs) Ah, Hawaii. I just hope we are not too late. Oh, Lord, there are two of them now. What's happening? Uh, Okay, quick version. Robotnik is back. I discovered the source of ultimate power. We need to get it back or the world is doomed. You brought some kind of 
<laughs> Space porcupine. I am an echidna warrior. Hmm. Hedgehog. It's time to say goodbye to humanity. Welcome to the new norm. This is your moment to be the big hero. Bad time to say this, but I don't actually have a plan. Hey, you got a little something on your... Uh, boy. Someone call an Uber? It's cold in here. Let's turn up the heat. The Winter Soldier. You're <laughs> not, citizen. You are terrible at this. Your negative attitude is not helping. <laughs> we stick together, no matter what. You're unskilled, <laughs> untrained, <laughs> unworthy. <laughs> you forgot one. Unstoppable. For a guy named Knuckles, you are really bad at punching. <laughs> April the 8th. Guess what? That's this weekend, brother. Guess where we're going. Uh, well, I know one thing. I'm going to have to take Fred Fred. Oh, yeah. Fred Fred will have a ball. He, he loves Sonic. In fact, right before we started on this, we were playing Sonic. Yeah. With that little, and this is the first Sonic time, Mania. First time he never gotten to play a Sonic game. He loves the show and loves the character, but he never gotten to play it till now. Boy, he loved it. And you can believe that we're going to have some coverage in our next podcast. Yeah, absolutely. But anyways, I had to play that one before. Uh, this is actually going to tie into our main content. Uh, so first we're going to play the trailer. Then we're going to do actually kind of a movie review. This trailer, I must say, got me super excited. What do we have here? Yeah, here I thought we were special. Fellas, this here's Bagman. Hangman. Oh, whatever. What the hell kind of mission <laughs> is this? Everyone here is the best there is. Who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. Let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first choice. You are here at the request of Admiral Kazansky, AKA Iceman. He seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. Just want to manage expectations. What the hell? Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. And we're off. Here we go. In three, two, one. We're going into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. You think up there you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. So was not coming back from this. Those are your pilots. Anything happens to them. Smoke in the air! Smoke in the air! You will never forgive yourself. No turning back now. Jeez. Having any fun yet? That is Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they say. After more than 30 years of service as one of the Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell, Tom Cruise, is where he belongs, pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot and dodging the advancements in rank that would ground him. 
when he finds himself training a detachment of Top Gun graduates for a specialized mission the likes of which no living pilot has ever seen. Maverick encounters Lieutenant Bradley Bradshaw, played by Miles Teller, call sign Rooster, the son of Maverick's late friend and radar intercept officer, Lieutenant Nick Bradshaw, a.k.a. Goose. Talk to me. <laughs> Facing an uncertain future... And confronting the ghosts of his past, Maverick is drawn into confrontation with his own deepest fears, culminating in a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those who will be chosen to fly it. And I was kind of like, eh, take it or leave it, until I saw this trailer and I was like, dude, this kind of looks cool. So I, yeah, it I sat down this week to watch, and that's what our main focus is, I sat down to watch the original Top Gun. Am I to understand you feel the need? May 27th, by the way, is Top Gun Maverick. The need for speed? The need for speed. <laughs> now, uh, I'm going to hit this button. Oh, Want to see a movie? Yeah. Any good? It was bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good bad thing. My eyeballs could have been sucked from their sockets. I like it a lot. The best movie ever made. A, a fandom, fandom Nexus, Nexus movie Nexus. review. And you know what? Yes, this movie came out. What was he? Uh, Nineteen May sixteenth, nineteen eighty six. And I'm calling it a review because I hadn't watched it in a long time, and this is kind of our main topical stuff. Uh, but this is a nineteen eighty six American action drama film directed by Tony Scott, produced by Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer, and associated with Paramount Pictures. Mm -hmm. And this is available for right now for viewing on Netflix. That's where I watched it. But here's the thing: Jerry Bruckheimer has almost a formula. Mm -hmm, that's right. He's always got some kind of, you know, kind of prideful, egotistical hot shot, uh, usually played by Tom Cruise, yeah. or sometimes Johnny Depp, because let's face it, Captain Jack Sparrow was kind of the egotistical yes, hot shot. that's right. <laughs> and there's usually something with somebody's father who was, you know, some sort of legendary or highly regard, and they, but they, I don't know, my, their father's gone when I was a child. I didn't really know my father, and they're going to learn about their father from somebody else that they hold in high regard that knew him. Daddy issues. Either it's a Viper or it's Jack Sparrow, mm -hmm. who's going to tell your lead protagonist about their father and say, no, your father was a hero, and you're going to be just the same. And they always feel like they have to live up to the shadow of their father. I, I realize Jerry Brookhammer keeps making the same movie over and over, but doggone it, they're fun. <laughs> and he's good at it. <laughs> he's good at it. Why change it? It's like ACDC. Somebody, uh, I can't remember who ACDC said that, but somebody's like, realize ACDC, it's like you keep putting out the same song. And he says, ah, but it's a good song. <laughs> well, you realize that uh, Cocktail had some of the same stuff in it. I didn't see that one. And, and the same with, uh, oh, uh, Day... Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Yes, was, I was thinking of that one. Because there's also, also another egotistical guy who seems like the bully, but turns out he's going to be one of your best friends. And not just that. You had the great, my one of my, the two favorite actors I have is Tommy Lee Jones and Robert Duvall. And Robert right. Duvall was great in that. Days, that's that's the only reason to watch Days of Thunder, really. Robert Duvall. I mean, it's, it's good. It's, I don't care about NASCAR, but Robert but, Flippin' Duvall, but brother. He's got some great actors. Yeah, Carrie, you do. Carrie, Carrie Elliott's. Uh, Carrie Elwes was in yeah. this one? I haven't watched Days of Thunder in so long. Yeah, it, yeah, he was. He played the, I guess you wouldn't call him the villain, but he's the guy, the cocky guy that he went against at the end. Yeah. Oh, so after he's done, because you know, he became friends with mm -hmm. that. Oh, I can't forget. I'm actually in a movie with that actor who played Roddy Burns. Yeah. Uh, uh, although I'm an extra in well, Lennox and One Mile, but he just plays a villainous he's cop He's on in the uh, one. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah he's Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah, Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> and I love that actor. I've gotten to see him a couple times at, at conventions. Yes. And I, I always forget the dude's name. And mm. I've been in a movie with him. I was an extra in the background eating a hamburger, but I was in a movie with the guy. Come on, brother. Yeah, I love y'all. Come on, y'all. I'm actually even a, well. Well, I don't think Jason Ritter was in that scene. I think his character was supposed to be dead at this point in the, in the movie. It's called the Next One Mile. I've never seen it, but I've seen. I'm in the trailer. You can see me in the background eating a hamburger. <laughs> I remember that day of filming. But I'm in a movie with Jason Ritter, brother. It was an independent <laughs> film. <laughs> uh, but it's. I mean, heck, man. But then I, when I saw the trailer, that's when I learned that this dude was in it. And I was like, <gasps> dude, I'm in a movie with that guy. Yeah, but anyway, he's on Days of Thunder, which is another basically top gun. I mean, I mean yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same thing because you always have a very, he likes to have smart women in there too. Mm -hmm, yeah. I mean, because, you know, Charlie and Top Gun, she's like this expert at stuff. And, and, uh, uh, here, here's what's funny about that because if you think about it, the Top Gun really focuses a lot on that that kind of romance yeah. there and I've heard uh, one podcast this is kind of funny I think it's a little tongue in cheek they said what, what, what we don't realize about Top Gun is it's it's a manly action flick. This, it's actually a chick flick. The skies is a manly action flick. So think about it. How many scenes do you have of shirtless skies? <laughs> and what's the major focus through most of the movie? Oh, romance. Yeah. It's a chick flick, guys. Oh, man. The, the girls. But they suck us in by flying jets at really fast speeds. <laughs> and the girls uh, went nuts with that film when it came out. Yeah. It, well, and it's Tom so, Cruise has always been a hot and item, then, man. And, let's face it. And then uh, I mean, we went and saw it on uh, Christmas night. 
when it came out in in eighty six because it was that mm. we used to go to the Dollar Theater. Back, <laughs> yeah, back in the day, I miss the Dollar Theater. Oh, maybe too. Of course, we don't need it as much now because it comes online and all. But back in the day, that's how you did it. Yeah, if, when you didn't have a lot of money, or you had a big family. And so we went, I remember it was at the Dollar Theater, and we went there on Christmas night and watched it, and we loved it. You know, it was a good show. I, you know, I didn't even realize the movie was out until uh, my brother checked the soundtrack out of the, uh, the, his, oh, the, the middle soundtrack. school, I guess, checked out the library, and the, the soundtrack is almost more famous than the Dega movie. Well, Kenny Loggins. Well, I Kenny, mean, Kenny was thinking Loggins. Anytime he was on it in the 80s, you knew it was going to be good. Yeah. You foot loose and you that. You know you're going to be driving off the deck and punching into overdrive. <laughs> That's right. Or pushing Drive into overdrive. me to the danger zone. I mean, wasn't that... <laughs> Wasn't that like the thing in the 80s? Like some of the biggest movies was Kenny Loggins. I mean, Caddyshack, yeah. Footloose. Footloose, yeah. I he mean, Kenny great. Loggins was just on top of the world, man. He did a couple of Footloose. He did a couple songs yeah. on there. I mean, yeah, dang. But yeah, so this, uh, we got Tom Cruise, of course, as Maverick. Kelly McGillis. Kelly which, McGillis. Uh, I'm, I want to know what happened to her character. Because uh, uh, we don't too. see we don't see her in this no, sequel. We see Jennifer Connelly, which is funny because she's at least 10 years younger, if not more, than Tom Cruise but, is. But uh, Kelly McGillis was uh, Charlotte Charlie Blackwood, Val Kilmer in there. That's the first movie I think I saw Val Kilmer in, but I didn't know I was going to love Val Kilmer as much as we do later as Tom Iceman Kazansky. I'd seen him in uh, Top Secret. Yeah, I hadn't seen any of those movies at the time. Yeah. So uh, before that, I seen him in Top Secret, a couple other things, and then shortly after, of course, he was in Willow. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. You all great. Uh, Anthony Edwards as yes. Goose, which later he became huge on ER. Yeah, I love what it. he's up to. Well, he was also right before that. He was also on Revenge of the Nerds. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, we can't we can't advise that one because we we were a family show brother. That's right, family show. That's a very R rated, very R rated. Holy cow! Absolutely. Yeah, there's stuff that I probably should never have seen, but no, I've seen same that one. Here, yeah. but Tom Skerritt, though, moving along. Oh yeah, he oh, is, I love Tom Skerritt. He is your uh, your your Captain Jack Sparrow ish character, where he's the one who. Oh no, actually, I knew your father. I flew with your father. He saved my life. He's that kind of thing. In my opinion, one of the he best. He was a great man ever. and a pirate. One of the best yeah. actors. Tom ever. Flippin' Skerritt, brother. He, he was my favorite part of the. In all honesty, as much as I love, um, oh, what's her head? I uh, I happen to think he was the best part of the movie Alien. Oh, the first, oh yeah, I forgot he was in. I've only seen Alien one time. Yeah, he was the he was the one where the alien yeah. first shows up, right in front of him. When you first see the face of the alien, it's him who's sitting there in the tube, and boom, it shows up right in front. Of you see the face of it, right in front of him. Tom Ooh, scary, scary. He, he had a he had a beard in that movie, but yeah, yeah. he was great actor. Just a great actor. Yeah, there's only there's only certain things I remember about watching that movie, and I remember that like the scariest is they're they're trying to check down some some almost like a tunnel thing, and when it when they yeah, climbed down him. the ladder, and then psh, there that, it was. That was, that was Tom Scarrett. and that yeah. was Tom Scarrett. Okay, dude, that was scary. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. Ooh, that's what, I know. I, I jumped. I I, say, I play scary games, but I don't do scary movies. I'm telling and you, that's why I've only watched it once because that was scary. I jumped. I was I was sitting there getting closer and closer to the TV, and it's a big TV. Oh. And when when he showed up, I jumped and I about killed Ooh. myself. <laughs> it was a scary, scary, scary movie. Yeah, it was Oof. a great film though. Oof. Uh, also, we got Michael Iron, Michael Flippin' Ironside oh, as man. well as Rick Jester Heatherly, and he's always got that grizzled. He oh, just looks, he's like the other Jack Nicholson. Uh, yeah, he is <laughs> Michael. Iron. I, I don't know if he's still around. Oh. That, that I don't remember. John his name. Stockwell. I need to look him up. Who that, played Cougar? He looks so familiar. Oh, oh yeah, he's a great actor. Who's that uh, bald guy who's in there? Who's also on Master oh, of the yeah. Universe? Oh uh, yeah, Master of the Universe. Heck, Back, Back to the, the Future. future. Uh, let me find his name here because he I know great. that guy. Mm. He's drinking coffee and he's. <laughs> well, that's another guy. that's always in the tower drinking oh, the coffee. Yeah. Right? He's a good actor too, though. He's been on a lot of stuff. Well, this is Meg Ryan's first movie as well. Oh yes, um, Meg I'm looking Ryan. for the guy. Ah. Uh, well, because yeah, there's there's Wolfman, Slider, Merlin, Tim Robbins as Merlin. Tim Robbins, yeah, yes. I think it might have been his first movie because he's barely there. But you're like, hey, Tim Robbins. There's an actor in there. I can't uh, think of his name right now. He was in Lonesome Dove. Later Clarence on, Gilliard is as Lieutenant J. Marcus Sundown Williams, Chipper's radar intercept officer. Whip Hubley as What's Hollywood, up? and you got Stinger and James Tolkien. I always forget that actor's name. Hmm. I'm gonna look up John Stockwell real fast though, because I mean he looks so familiar, and I'm like, I, I swear he did some other stuff. One of those actors. Uh, American actor, director, producer, writer, and former model was writing the film Cheaters. He was nominated for the premiere Emmy. Oh, I'm not saying, well, let me see if I can find a list of movies. Go ahead, what are you about to say? So, so one of those actors on there, he's the one who called to say that uh, uh, Maverick was quitting on mm -hmm. that movie. He was uh, he would be uh, playing Jasper on Lonesome Dove a couple years later. Mm. Yeah. Quarterback Princess. That's probably where I said, did you ever see Quarterback Princess? Uh -huh. Helen Hunt is a, a female quarterback. Mm. So, 
I've heard of it though. Yeah, and it's it's where you know they they everybody was like super defensive. It was like we got a girl as our quarterback and she can throw pretty good, but don't let her get hit because at oh, one point yeah. she gets leveled by somebody too. But I, you know, I kind of think I watched it just getting hell and hunt was always cute. Oh, she's let's deep. face it. Uh, a lot of the other were just things that I that he's been in. I I didn't watch, um, but uh, that one I think that's probably why he looked familiar. Uh, I cannot think of that uh, actor's. Oh my goodness, my my uh, my headphones are falling down my head a little bit. <laughs> but I think that's the ones are like most of the actors I want to get it you know, like into on this one. But yeah, this is it's not heavy on plot. Yeah, let's face it. But it's it's kind of just fun to watch. But it's almost like you're getting. There's just random scenes that are somewhat connected just because the characters are all there. But it's like he gets hopped around, and this scene is just basically happens to further the romance or whatever. Because you have the scene in the classroom where uh, Charlie, the, you know, played by Kelly McGillis, has to give Maverick a dressing down. And then you have this almost car chase thing where oh, that's great. he's going on a motorcycle, goes through an intersection. She you know, goes Bill through that intersection, nearly has an accident. <laughs> he pulls over. Yeah, you complaining about my flying? Look what you just did. She's like, you left before I was going to finish my sentence. <laughs> and it's like, so they have things just so they can fight. It's like, in there, I have to not make sure that nobody knows that I'm madly in love with you. You know, yeah. it's just it's just random scenes that are just kind of put together to make a plot somehow or another of it. But the real, real story is just mishmash of there. And does Maverick really learn anything? Maybe he learns not to leave his wingman, but does he learn to not be so brash? He almost gets encouraged for some of his stuff where he breaks a lot of the rules because they say, that's really actually pretty brave flying, but we're not allowed to say that. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, does he? Is there any character growth? I don't know. We'll find out in the new movie. Yeah. Well, well, it's, he says some of the same stuff. You think up there and you're dead. Same line he had in the first movie. Da, 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 yeah, and I like da, having the piano, da, having the original da, da. anthem, so... <laughs> But yeah, it's not like you got a lot of depth or character growth, but dadgummit, it's just fun. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's just a fun movie, but you're you're not going to solve world hunger watching this movie, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, it's one of those films that you, it's entertaining as all heck. Yeah, it's just entertainment. Yeah, it is. And, and filmed with, you know, we're like real fighter jets, and there's some things used in acknowledgments to all the pilots that worked with them. And I mean, yeah, that's that's the type of thing that made me really, I think, enjoy when I was a kid when we'd go to an air show. Is, you know, Top Gun made me almost want to, I want to become, I'd still like to learn to fly. It'd be fun. But I don't know if my body can handle those Gs, man. Cause, a lot of people love that film so much that back in the day. They joined the Navy. Everybody did. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people did. It, yeah. It, it, it uh, they, I remember whenever that movie came out, people were suddenly. I remember people would start coming to the schools and stuff, and people would start <laughs> signing up. And it, like, I, was like, oh I want to fly an F-15. Like, yeah, I, I hate to tell you this. It's not going to change. Everything. But we used to have that uh, River Raid, it, uh, the game on Atari. And I well, vaguely remember it. When we got uh, home from watching that, we all would start playing River Raid and stuff because we wanted to be like you know Maverick. <laughs> we wanted to be like Goose. No, not Goose. We didn't want to die. No. We, want, we wanted to be like That's Ice Man. Horrible. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, well, heck, you remember the, the Nintendo game? Oh, Top yeah. Man? I, yeah. That was a hard game, though, too. Yeah, man. it was. It wasn't that easy. Was hard. It took forever just to learn how to land on an aircraft carrier. But my brother, who collected all the G.I. Joe guys, and we, I had a few, but not in a lot. He was the, the main collector. But we would. he had some of those uh, planes that they had. And I can't remember the name of it now, but he would grab his, and sometimes I grab the extra, usually the cheap versions. Like yeah. we go to the store, and they'd have the. Okay, so you'd have GI Joe, and just for the sake of Andrew, you either have Sergeant Rock or wannabe Joe, we'll call it. And <laughs> and, and uh, I had some of those. Yeah, and I'd fly around with the you know we'll say Kmart brand you know plane. Or something you'd find at the garage sale. But the point is that he'd have a plane, I'd have a plane, and we'd be, you know, right. doing the music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, I got a funny story about the the uh, knockoff G.I. Joe that I had. He, not only was he a knockoff G.I. Joe, he was a bargain basement Rambo. You know what, it, <laughs> you know what the, the name, I swear, this was what was the package's name. His name was Ramrod. <laughs> Ramrod. That it's, sounds bad. I, yeah. He was, you know, basically constructed as a G.I. Joe, but he had like camouflage pants, shirtless, <laughs> blonde hair, along with a mullet, basically, and a red headband. Mm -hmm. So he was basically supposed to be Rambo as a G.I. Joe. And but a little bit of Hogan. The red head with a. Well, you know, every time they would bring out these uh, barbarian slash wrestler guys, it was like He Man and Hulk Hogan combined. <laughs> and that's no joke. Yeah. You, you would find it, it was Hogan. Ho uh, he Hogan. They would, they'd have yeah, these He yeah. Hogans they'd bring out. It'd rather be the, and the wrestlers, if you look at them, a lot of times because they were too cheap to 
do a, a whole new body part, you would see that the bottom of it looked like a it was furry, kind of like he man's, or it looked like a barbarian bottom part, yeah. and yet it had a Hoganish head. Yeah, <laughs> it's what it was. It was yeah. a he Hogan. <laughs> now I want to want to point out something. This it's, it's even the last thing mentioned here on a Wikipedia page for Top Gun. Maverick decides to return to Top Gun as an instructor at mm. the end of the film. Now, in this new one, I think they forgot that because he's like, well, I'm not really his teacher. Yeah. It's like, really? You chose to go back and teach. What went wrong? Now, the, you know, the cool thing is, is like he's, he comes back to teach at the request of Iceman because one of the things they do establish in the movie is whoever ends up being their top pilot at Top mm-hmm. Gun is given the option to come back as an instructor. And Iceman was their top guy. And he ended up, I forgot what rank they say he is in the second one, but he's the one who's been the top guy at Top Gun and who requested... Maverick to come back and teach. Well, there may have been. I mean, we're talking thirty years. There may have been a lot of things that have happened that we yeah. haven't seen. So, yeah, I'm sure they'll mention it. Maverick just didn't want to retire, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure we'll hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there'll be a lot, but let me tell you something. You are still dangerous. Mm-hmm. You That's can be right. my wingman any day. <laughs> you but, can be mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Both. Both not. <laughs> you can be mine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, and that's where I want to end the show. So we want to thank you, of course, for sticking around with us for the whole hour and 23 minutes that we've been on here. And hey, you know what? We want to give a thank you to Karen Kennedy, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, and Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show for helping me out with some of my sounders. Remind you to go to NeverlandPodcast.com. By the way, around the middle of the page, also on the side, you'll see a thing for my podcast reviews. This is a great company for like $50 a year. You can get all your reviews sent to your email, and they'll even get you a little app that you can go and put your reviews up on the website. So go check out our website. Uh, I don't get on Twitter so much anymore. It's a cesspool, but I do have a, a Twitter page, and I mainly just get on there to post when we have a new episode. Well, send us an email, though, podcast at neverlandpodcast.com. We do have a Facebook group and a Facebook fan page. You can like us or even join us in the group. Uh, bo- both are under Neverland Podcast. Just search us out. You can leave us a voicemail, I think. I need to test it again, 816-226-6492, as long as they didn't shut us down. Oh, hey, on the website, you can join the Neverlanders, become an official Lost Boy or Pixie. Uh, why do we have Pixies? Because, as we recall, girls are too clever and they don't get lost. Also, please visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Podcast. Your Patreon support means the world to us and helps keep this thing going. But until we talk to you, probably next week, as uh, we're going supersonic. Ha 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 ha. See, I'm funny. Uh, remember, get lost. In an adventure! <laughs>Recently, our client Tommy met his banker to discuss continuing his father's restaurant legacy. In us, he found a partner that understood the importance of passing the torch. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Tommy. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on prize picks. The most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com/get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.